Chicken Little would have had a lousy time in ancient Greece. Most folks were already scared stiff that the sky was about to fall. When it never did, the notion arose that something must be propping it up. Probably that titanic mountain glimpsed in the west where the heavens meet the earth. If something held up the sky, then certainly, thought the ancient Greeks, Zeus must have put it there. And that something, according to the logic of myth, must once have been someone, and someone who offended the gods dearly. Any one of the titans was a pretty good candidate, and the Greeks ultimately settled on Atlas, a brother of that crafty Prometheus. It may surprise you that Atlas supported the sky, not the earth, as is now often portrayed. But Hesiod says sky, and Hesiod was always right. The air seems to have risen once ancient scientists proposed that the heavens were spherical. The artists then fell in line, and they depicted Atlas holding a globe. According to Hesiod, Atlas was just another titan punished for siding with the losers in one big cosmic war, but this wasn't good enough for some writers. Ovid, for example, makes Atlas the mortal prince of Mauritania, a northwestern African kingdom thought to lie at the edge of the world in the supposed sight of the fabled garden of the Hesperides, whose apples were golden. One day the hero, Perseus, fresh from slaying Medusa, passed through Mauritania and begged Atlas for shelter. But the king, recalling prophecies that a son of Zeus would steal the apples, refused. This really ticked Perseus off, but he was no match for the king in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so, pretending to offer Atlas a conciliatory gift, he pulled out of the bag the head of Medusa. Atlas was instantly turned into stone, and, it being Zeus's will, grew in size until he reached the heavens. Atlas, in short, became Mount Atlas, or rather, the entire Atlas mountain range in Libya. There are many versions of this myth, but none of them explain why a book of maps is called an atlas. The answer lies in a mistake made by Ramon Mercator when he published a collection of maps in 1595. Mercator thought Atlas shouldered the earth rather than the sky, and he fancied that a picture of the Titan would aptly grace the title page of a book that contained the world and could easily be carried on one's shoulder. In its 1636 English edition, this book was given the title Atlas, or a geographical description of the world, after which Atlas became a common name for all such collections.